In this video, we're going to talk about how to manage users in WordPress. If you're only running a blog for your own self, and there's only one of you, then you don't really need to worry about it too much. You shouldn't really have any other users. Though, there is the option to have subscribers. We'll take a look at how to manage users and the different possible roles they may have. In the admin, on the left, under users, you can view all users. And right now we only have one, and it's me. User information is sometimes rendered on the front of the website as well. For example, here's our news post about movies in the park. And it says, written by Topher. And it's a link. And if you click it, then you get to go to an archive of all the posts by that user. So it's worth remembering that some of this information actually gets shown on the front of the site. Now, when you're looking at the user archive in the admin area, you can see how many posts that person has written, their role, their email address, their name if they've entered one, and then this is called a Gravatar, and it's related to Gravatar.com, and it's used only if that user has an account at Gravatar.com using the same email that is here. From right here, you can change the role to any of one of these, and we'll talk about those in a few more minutes. You could bulk delete users, and then you can search users. On a site with many users, the search can be very useful. Let's edit this user and look at some of the options. On a per user basis, you can disable the visual editor when writing. I don't know why you'd want to do this, but some people simply prefer HTML. Then there's an admin color scheme. And simply by clicking, you can change the color scheme of the admin area. I never do. I just like the default. Then you can enable keyboard shortcuts for comment moderation. And there's a link here to the codex and that helps you know what can be done. And then there's this black toolbar at the top, and you can optionally show it or not show it. By default, it shows for everyone when they're logged in. Some people simply don't like it. Then we get to personal information. You'll note that I don't have written in here a first name or last name, and that's okay. That works. But I'm going to go ahead and do it. And then there's a nickname, Required. I'm going to make mine a little more readable. And then Display Name Publicly As. And you can choose from any of the above fields. So I'm simply going to choose Nickname. There's Contact Info. An email address is required. And in fact, users can use their email address to log in now. They don't have to use their username. That's one of the reasons that email addresses are so important. You may never have two users with the same email address. The website is optional. Some themes put it on the front of the website, some don't. And the same goes for biographical information. Here we have profile picture. WordPress grabs the profile picture from Gravatar if it can, but if it can't, you can set your own. And here we can generate a new password. It's possible to be logged into this site from two different places. Maybe you logged in at work and left it logged in, and when you get home, want to log it out. You can simply click this button, and it will take care of it for you. Now you'll note that it didn't talk about role on this page. That's because you may not change your own role. You can only change it for others, even if you are an administrator. But let's take a look at roles. I'm going to click Add New. And required is username and email. And then there's this non-required information, a password, and then the option to send the user an email about their account. And then here we have roles. And roles are very important. Let's talk about those. An administrator has full power to do everything. They can manage plugins, themes, content, users, everything. An editor can do everything with content, which means they cannot change 
plugins or themes or settings or manage tools, but they can do anything with anyone's content because they're the editor. An author can do anything with their own content. So they can write and publish and unpublish, etc. A contributor can write but not publish. It must be reviewed by the editor or the administrator. Lastly, a subscriber can't do anything with any content. There's very little they can do besides change their own name and their own password. But what they can do is be logged into your website and have the website know about them. This is particularly useful if they comment a lot. Because then they don't have to put in their user, nope, then they don't have to put in their name, their web address, etc. They just comment. Also, logged in users, when they comment, are rarely moderated. Usually they're known users. Because the site owner sees the account being created. And if he doesn't like them, he simply deletes the account. New roles may be invented and added to WordPress at any time, and this is very common with e-commerce. When you install WooCommerce or Easy Digital Downloads, you may end up with an inventory manager and a sales manager. And these roles allow someone to log in and deal only with e-commerce materials, never seeing any other content or settings or things like that. This can happen with just about any plugin. If you get a photography plugin, you might end up with a variety of other roles. If you run a large newspaper with WordPress, you might end up with more roles than the ones that it comes with. If you run a site with multiple people using it on a regular basis, think about what role they should have, what they need, and what they do. And make sure that they have the right role. Otherwise, they end up frustrated and start believing that WordPress can't do the things that they need to do, simply because their permissions are wrong. So feel free to make multiple users for your website. Think carefully about passwords, make sure they have a good password, and think carefully about roles and make sure that they're able to do what they need to do on your site.